And so now, so guys like you know, David Wayne and Michael Black on the shoulder, are you still, what, what's, the, what, what's the vibe now? Are you guys all buds? We, we, <laughs> there is a never ending email chain uh, of just total nonsense between the, <laughs> between the 11 of us that goes on to this day. And one of the things is that we've all started uncovering, we've all started looking back at some of our like, you know, boxes of stuff and uncovering stuff. So Tom just wrote to the group the other day, he was like, oh my God. I've got these tapes of some of our rehearsals in freshman year. Wow. And we're all like, oh my god, transfer, transfer. So yeah, so yeah, yeah we, we, we still joke around all the time. And um, yeah, it's, it, 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 there were tense years after the breakup. But it's, you know, I, we're like family, yeah. you know? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, through all that. It's, uh, and then you all kind of found your own niche. I mean, everyone's doing their own things, writing movies, directing movies. Your storytelling is, is you, you, you fit upon something here with the podcast and the risk show. Yeah, well, it actually had, the whole storytelling thing for me really has its origins back in the state because we used to, we used to come to MTV at 10 o'clock in the morning and we were, at, at a certain point we all agreed, look, we are so mean to each other throughout the course of the day. We should have a half hour where we just check in with each other emotionally. So at 10, we'd gather in a circle and everyone would be like, well, I'm okay, I'm a little bit sad about this, or blah, 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 blah. But I was the only gay guy, so I was the only guy who wasn't doing the same thing the night before as everyone else, because everyone else just hung out together 24-7. So I was off having ridiculously filthy adventures. <laughs> said Kevin's check-ins are the best. <laughs> Tom Lennon, I think he does it on the DVD, he's like, Kevin's check-ins would always be like, well, I was three stories down in a sub-basement in the meatpacking desert with some legless Puerto Rican. <laughs> And so, uh, Michael Black used to always tell me, you should do that stuff on stage. And I used to be like, oh no, I'm too gay, I'm too weird. And, you know, I always felt like there, were, there was a Dr. Jekyll and a Mr. Hyde side to me. There's a side to me that's super friendly, super polite, super Midwestern, and a side to me that's like, completely like, what is this X-rated story this person is telling? So Black said to me at one point, I did a, a show full of character monologues in 2008. I did character monologues for years and years and years after the state broke up, and they just weren't connecting. And I did a show here at the pit, and it was called F Up, and all five characters were just failures. <laughs> they had basically ruined their careers, and they were all representations of myself. And <laughs> show itself was a bit of an F up. It just wasn't <laughs> connecting with the audience. And after one of the shows, I said to my boy, what'd you think? Because I didn't feel like it went well. And he said, Kevin, I feel like the whole audience wanted you to drop the act and just start speaking from the heart as yourself. And I said, I know, I feel like I've been hearing that in the back of my head for so long, but it just feels so risky. And he said, exactly. He was like, that is the juicy stuff, risky. So the very next week, I started trying storytelling and, and saw it was just night and day. That you can get up on stage and if you're being authentic, if you're being honest, uh, you can say the strangest or the corniest or whatever things and people's hearts will open up because they sense that there's sincerity there. So I started, the, I, I was like, in order to keep doing this every week, I've got to do a weekly podcast of this, force myself to do it. And at first it was mostly, oh, I pooped my pants stories, or, you know, <laughs> crazy BDSM sort of stories, that kind of stuff. But in the mail, the front of the mail. <laughs> But eventually people started coming forth and telling stories on risk about, you know, I was molested when I was five, or my sister overdosed on cocaine, stuff like that. And people started writing into us, this show saved my life. Like this show, people are saying things they would not say in mixed company, but people are saying things that are precious on this show. So it's become now like a cause for me. I started the story studio in my school yeah. because of it. So it's, it remains a very, very funny show, but a show that can get really deep, you know, at a, at a turn. And I kind of love it for that. Riskshow.com, you can download the podcast. Uh, I hope we had fun talking about this. Is that, you know, you just go up there and tell stories. This is kind of fun, right? 
no, getting out there? Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. We have fun hearing these great stories. And so many more stories from Kevin and other performers all over the city. Check it out. Thank you. Thank you, <laughs> Kevin Allen. Uh, don't know how to end. <laughs>